Hey guys, Leaf Path for Now Art here, and I hope you're all having a super creative day. Today I'm working on a painting, an actual for real canvas painting, my first ever. And you can see here on page, this is actually kind of a book review. I'm using the Painting Animals book. I don't remember what the author's name is right off the top of my head, but I will put it in the video here. Um, you can click the link down in the description to buy the book. I highly recommend it. It's a really good book. It's not a... I mean... It helped me. But... It wasn't the miracle that I thought it was going to be. Now, this video is going to be kind of interesting to watch because um, my camera kept cutting out and I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm going to be looking into it to make sure that my next video doesn't do that because I lost a lot of footage. Um, most of the ending, in fact, I think all of the ending I lost. But the rest of it should be fine. What you can see, I hope you enjoy. I started out by quote unquote toning the ground, which is something that they recommend to cover up the white of the paper. I'm not entirely sure why you do it. I do know that in order to do it, you have to um, dilute the paint a lot. And I did that, but it never seemed like I was getting a light enough mix until I used yellow. And then, wow, that was perfect. So I think I'll be using yellow to tone the ground from now on. You can see it's a little messy, kind of ugly, actually. But, you know, this part's not supposed to be pretty. Um, I'm hoping that there isn't too much lag. Again, there's a lot of lag going on. You'll also see that I play with camera angles a lot. Whew, glad I didn't stick with that one. That one sucks. But, um, I was trying to find a place where you could watch comfortably and I could still paint comfortably, and in the end I just decided to go with the flat canvas because it was the easiest and it was what I already knew. Um, painting with acrylics is something that has been difficult for me in the past. I've never done it with any kind of regularity. I think it was one of the first real artist things I tried to do past graphite. And it's because I got a kit for Christmas one year. And I don't know, I thought it was really fun. I really enjoyed doing it. And it came with a little DVD where I could watch them paint and then paint myself. And that was really fun, but in the end, I just, you know, I kind of fell away from it as I found colored pencils, which were, you know, obviously a cheaper medium, and then markers, which are not a cheaper medium. Um, but there's just something about it that really draws me in, because markers are a really translucent medium, and colored pencils are, well, they're not really opaque they're just a weird medium. I have a really hard time with those. But digital painting is a very opaque medium. But acrylic painting can be both. In acrylics, you can really get really soft, really smooth blends. And you can also get really sharp edges, which is exactly what you need for painting realistic fur is sharp edges. And I don't think I achieved that in this painting. I don't... This painting is not what I wanted it to be, but I'm really happy with it anyway. And that's why even though the filming really messed up, I decided to go ahead and upload it anyway so that you could at least see what I had. Because I do like this painting. And I especially like the eyes. And I'm going to be very particular about showing the eyes at the end because I'm very happy with those. And after I got the eyes done, I was kind of like, okay. So this, this is what... 
I'm going for. This right here is where I want to be. And the spots, I'm really happy with. Honestly, I think the spots are the only reason that this drawing looks as good as, or painting, I should say, that this painting looks as good as it does. Because without all the spots, I do think that it would just be kind of flat, you know? But the spots really make it look like an actual thing. My head does get in the frame a few times, and you can see the wire over there. I'm just trying to get a good angle. I don't think I succeeded at that, but I did try. I'm honestly not entirely sure how this video is going to come out. It's... The video was painful to make because the camera kept cutting out and because of just everything. A lot, a lot of things went wrong in the making of this video. I really wish that I could say that, wow, I've really got the grasp of acrylics now, but I really don't. I want to do more realistic animals and hopefully I will be attending Heritage Days in Macomb this year and I'd like to have a few paintings for sale. That's what I'd like to do. But who knows? Honestly. Um, I'll talk more about Heritage Days in another video where I have more time to really go deep in depth about what I'm going to be doing when I have more information. Um, I do not recommend that you buy the beginner's painting set at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure what the brand is because... I haven't ever really looked at it, but it was like a 30 color set, and it came in a little box. I do not recommend this at all, because a lot of the colors have split on me, so that when, so that when I would squeeze them to get some of the color out, the sides would split, and the paint would get all over my hands and I would lose some of it and it was just it was a messy nasty deal it was not a good thing if you're going to get paint I would recommend a different brand than that I can't recommend a particular brand because I don't know enough about I don't know enough about acrylic paint to really recommend a specific brand of paint. But I can tell you that I don't recommend this one. So. The picture on this painting is not very good. I'm not entirely sure what I did wrong. I mean, the picture on this particular video. Because it kind of looks like there's lines running across. You can't really see what I'm doing. And that irritates me a little bit because... I don't know, isn't that the entire purpose of a video, is to be able to see what I'm doing? I hope it got me... It looks like it got all of me coloring the first few spots. The first set of spots, because in the tutorial I was following, and I'm going to be more reviewing this book here, uh, I followed the leopard tutorial in that. I used my own reference photo, but I followed a tutorial in which he painted a different leopard, and I found this reference photo on a website that allows you to... It's got, like, free-for-use photos, a ton of them. A lot of them are professional quality. The only thing is that you have to change them in some way, which makes them absolutely perfect for painting and drawing reference because obviously painting and drawing a photo does count as changing it no matter what medium you're using um so in the tutorial he recommended that i paint the spots first so i didn't lose the underpainting but i didn't really map out all the spots in my under drawing because it wasn't an underpainting it was a pencil drawing but I didn't map out the spots in that. So I really should have done 
the color of the fur before I moved on to the spots because honestly I just lost all of the spots. You couldn't even remotely see where they were supposed to be. But you can see how slow I went because this video is sped up a lot. And it still looks painfully slow me trying to paint in these spots. It took a long time. This footage is like seven hours long. It would be even longer if I had all the footage. Um, so anyway, back to the book. I'm getting off track. The book is good. It has different mediums in it. The first is oil tutorials, and I did follow an oil tutorial, and I do know that oil and acrylics are two different mediums, but it's painting in general that I have difficulty with, and I know that oil is a little easier to blend because it's wet into wet more than wet into dry, but I really do work more wet into dry. It's difficult to explain, but... I do know that they're two different mediums, but I was following that tutorial because I like the way it looked better than the wild animal acrylic tutorials, which I will also be following, don't worry. I'm going to be doing a bird next, and then I will do a rabbit probably, because I really like the rabbit tutorial that they have in there. Um, see, this is where I really started to become proud of how the drawing was looking, and I was like, wow, I really like this, but it, it was strictly the spots that made it look like that, and honestly, I think I could have kept the painting like this if it hadn't been such a specific painting of a leopard biting on a stick or a bone, sorry, if it hadn't been a specific painting of a leopard biting on a bone, I think I could have left it with just the eyes and the spots, and it would have looked really good, but because the painting itself is so specific, I really had to finish it and do the bone because otherwise it just kind of looked weird but I do like how it turned out in the end anyway um, the book is not as helpful as what you think it is when you look at it it doesn't have a lot of general techniques what it has is step-by-step -step tutorials on how to paint very specific scenes and the instructions are pretty vague. You don't get really specific how to blend this into that. It's really not an acrylic painting book. It's, it's very specifically an animal painting book. So if you're new at acrylics like I am, I would recommend you get a book that is specifically about painting with acrylics or just painting in general before you try and narrow it down to animals because I don't know how much this book is going to help me with general acrylic painting and I do think I'm going to have to get another book that is more generally about just painting techniques. But this book did help me with this particular painting. I couldn't tell you how because I can't think of any specific place. I mean the underpainting helped I'm sure. But I couldn't tell you where this specific place, a specific place where the book helped me. It didn't really teach me about eyes. It does, at the beginning of the book, have a few very specific um, areas on how to paint very specific parts of animals. It's got cat face features and then dog face features, and that's the end of that. And then it goes straight into the step-by-step -step tutorial, so it's not like other tutorial books where it starts with an entire chapter of general techniques and then goes into the tutorials. It's not like that at all. So if you're looking for something like that, I wouldn't recommend this book. I would get a different book. I can't recommend another book because obviously I don't know, otherwise I would have gotten that book instead of this book. Unfortunately, I am running out of film here. I hope you've enjoyed what you've been able to see. I'm going to flash up at the end. As always, I'll put up the finished piece and you'll see just how much footage is missing and I I don't know I'm sad about the footage I'm sad that the footage is missing I'm sad about a lot of things that happened in this picture but in the end I'm really happy how it turned out so if you're not subscribed yet go ahead hit that subscribe button uh you know the drill, honestly. I don't have to say any of this. Okay, I hope you all have a really creative day. Bye.